All right, folks, I want to work you through creating your own uh, Gingrich style stocking guide for our quantitative silviculture lab. And so what we're starting with today is a grid. Um, and the first thing you'll need to do is label your axes. And with any Gingrich stocking guide we have, we'll have basal area on the y axis. And of course, the units are square feet per acre. And then on our x-axis for any Gingrich stocking guide, uh, what we'll have is our stand density, and the units on that are gonna be trees per acre. And so there we've labeled our axes. Uh, we're gonna draw two different types of lines on our Gingrich stocking guide. Uh, the first type of line we are going to draw will be our quadratic mean diameter lines. And the second type of line that we're gonna draw is gonna be our three stocking lines, our A line, our B line, and our C line. So to do that, we're going to need our equation uh, for quadratic mean diameter as it relates to basal area and trees per acre for those lines. And then I'm gonna show you a trick where we can use our stand density index equation uh, in order to draw our QMD lines on this guide. Uh, let me switch us over to the whiteboard uh, so I can work out the equations with you first, so you'll see how those will work. And here we go. Okay, so to draw our QMD lines, we need the equation. And so let me go ahead and see if I can type it in with text here for you. So we know QMD is equal to, I'm going to start with brackets here, and then parentheses so we get our order of operations correct, basal area, divided by trees per acre. We all know how to measure that using a point or plot system. I'm gonna take that quantity and I'm gonna divide it by 0 0.005454. I'm gonna enclose that in brackets and I'm gonna raise all this to the 0 0.5 power. And so the brackets raised to the 0 0.5 power, that's simply taking the square root of everything in there, okay? Uh, so envision this the same as if there were a square root symbol over that whole series of fractions. Okay, so I'm gonna start solving this. I'm gonna to need to solve this for basal area and I'm gonna to need to solve this for trees per acre. So algebraically, the first step I need to do, I need to get rid of this square root, this raised to the point half power that's over this whole quantity. And so what's that is gonna give me is QMD squared equals um, basal area over trees per acre over 0 0.005454, okay? Uh, next, I'm gonna need to get rid of this denominator, 0 0.005454, and so I'm gonna do that uh, by multiplying both sides of the equation by that. So what I end up with now is QMD squared times 0 0.005454 equals BA over trees per acre, okay? Now, my next step algebraically, I can move trees per acre to the other side of the equation simply by multiplying both sides by trees per acre. So now what I end up with is QMD squared times 0 0.005454 times trees per acre equals basal area. Okay, so hopefully everyone can follow how we did that algebraically. First, we squared both sides of this equation to get rid of the square root on this side. Then we multiplied both sides of the equation here by 0 0.005454 to move it over here and out of the denominator. Then we did the same thing for trees per acre. We multiplied both sides of the equation by trees per acre. So now what this equation gives me, uh, this fourth equation on the bottom here, if I know quadratic mean diameter, which I will, because I'm gonna try and draw specific QMD lines on my Gingrich stocking guide, and I know the trees per acre, my x-axis number, I'll be able to predict where that point should be on the y-axis on basal area, and I'll be able to draw those lines. Okay, so that'll work for some of them, and I'll show you exactly which in a moment. Uh, for others, I'm gonna need trees per acre, okay? So I'm gonna take this equation, and I'm gonna solve it for trees per acre. And the easiest way to do that, let me draw this out for you with some brackets that I think will help. QMD squared, because of the communicative property of multiplication, I can put brackets in the midst of this equation anywhere I want, and it really isn't gonna change uh, the outcome. And so I put brackets there, times trees per acre equals basal area. 
And so I know algebraically this, this equation looks a little complex, right? But it's very simple. This whole bracketed quantity, QMD squared times 0 0.005454, let's define that as X. So let's say X equals Q, and I'll put it in brackets again for you, QMD squared times 0 0.005454 in brackets. Okay, so that's a second equation I've now defined. When I apply this, X equaling that quantity to this equation up here, it becomes X times trees per acre equals basal area. That's gonna be very easy for us to solve, right? Because now we simply know that trees per acre equals basal area over X. I just divided both sides of that equation by X, very simply. And now let me plug back all this bracketed quantity in for X. And so what I get is trees per acre equals basal area divided by, and I'll throw it in brackets again, QMD squared times 0 0.0055454, okay? Now, when you're doing this in your calculator, uh, make sure order of operations is correct. You need to make sure you're squaring QMD and you're not taking QMD and raising it to a power of two times that 0.005454, that'll be incorrect. I can make this a little more specific for you all. Let me get my whiteboard working correctly here. Um, but if I took this and I put parentheses around this quantity here, QMD to the second power, it might make that more clear for us, okay? And so really uh, what we're gonna need is two equations and we're gonna need this equation right here that I'm underlining and we're gonna need this equation right here that I'm underlining. Those two equations will get us everything we need in terms of our quadratic mean diameter lines, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch my share back to our grid now that we have those two equations. Okay, so y'all should be able to see the grid. Um, it looks like I lost my annotation where I had labeled the axes. So remember the y-axis is basal area, the x-axis is trees per acre. So let's keep that in mind. And so I know with my quadratic mean diameter lines, uh, I, I know that every single one of them is going to have a point here at zero, zero, right at the origin on this graph, okay? And so I know one end of each of my QMD lines. All I need to do is figure out the other end. And so we're gonna do that. You could do it anywhere in here, okay? But I'm gonna make it easy for us. We're gonna figure out what QMD equals um, where the line exits the right side of the page. So right here, let's see, well, I'm just drawing random arrow, arrows here. Let me erase that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for us right here because anywhere along this line, okay? So if I'm looking at a point right here, now my spotlight function is not working. Okay, we'll try stopping that. Okay, well, um, if, if I'm looking at a point, I'll just use the mouse. Uh -huh. If I'm looking at a point anywhere right here, okay, along the right edge of my graph paper, I know one thing. I know that trees per acre equals 600. Similarly, if I'm looking anywhere along this top line on the graph here, I know one thing. I know basal area equals 120 square feet per acre, okay? So if you go look earlier, and this is all described in detail for you in this lab handout, if you look right here, step one on page two, I've highlighted it for you, we're not gonna draw every QMD line. We're just gonna draw these nine QMD lines, the four inch, six inch, eight inch, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, and 28. They all start at zero, zero. And what I'm telling you is that the four inch and the six inch line should end on the right side of the graph, okay? Um, and so for the four and six, it doesn't say four here, it just says six. It's gonna end on the right side of the graph. And so we know on the right side of the graph, trees breaker is 600. The other lines, the eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch, 16 inch, 20 and 28 inch lines, I've already done this out and they end on the top of our grid. And so we know on the top of our grid basal area equals 120. So let me go back to our grid here. Okay, let me erase these annotations since we won't be needing them. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> and so now what I have to do is for my four inch QMD line, I know the QMD is four. I know trees per acre is 600. 
I want to know what basal area equals when those two conditions are true, and I'll be able to put a dot right on here. Um, so let me switch us back to uh, our sheet or our whiteboard where we were working out that math. Okay, and so remember, I'm ending on the right side. I know trees per acre, and I know basal area, or sorry, I know trees per acre, and I know QMD, which means I'm going to need basal area per acre. And so if we look, this equation right here will get that for us. Okay, so let's see if we can actually apply it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation right here, and I'm going to do my 4-inch QMD line, so I know 4 squared times 0 0.005454 times trees per acre. Remember on the right side of the graph that is 600. Okay, so I've just plugged them in. Now I can go ahead and run that calculation. 4 squared I already know is 16. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I, I don't have a calculator here handy. I'm just going to open up Excel. I don't think you can see it, but I'm just going to type in 16 times 0 0.005454 times 600 equals, and the answer I get is 52.36. Now these decimals aren't very important because I'm trying to draw this out on a grid, and that's going to be very difficult to do to, you know, even one decimal place, let alone two. You'll be good enough to get it close to the one there. And so you can see I would do the same thing for six. I would plug in a six right there instead of a four, and I would get a number, and that would be the basal area. Uh, so remember that number, 52.36 square feet per acre. Let's go back here. And so now I know that I have a line. It starts at 0, 0. This is our 4-inch QMD line. And I know where trees per acre equals 600, basal area equals 52 point whatever it was. It doesn't really matter. So here you can see 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. My grids on this axis are by fives, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. On the x-axis, I'm counting by 20s. So here's 50. So I know I'm about halfway between the 50 and the 55 box. So if I start a line right here on my far right side, halfway between that 50 box and the 55 box, and I connect it to the origin, there we go. What this line I've just drawn is, that's QMD equals four inches. And that's true everywhere along that line, okay? So we've done our one QMD line. I already showed you the equation uh, where you can go ahead and plug in and I'm just gonna start drawing lines. These are not correct lines, so don't copy these. I'm putting them in arbitrary places. The overall trend will be correct. So when you draw your six inch QMD line, it's gonna be higher. It's gonna be somewhere up here, but again, that is not the exact right space. I'm just making this up to give you an example. And then I know my other lines, my 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, and 28, they're going to end up on the top here. So I'm going to use that other equation that I underlined for you in purple. And I know basal area is 120. I plug that in. I know this line is going to be my 8-inch QMD. I just need to know how many trees per acre where I need to put this point. Okay? So let me go ahead and do one of those so I can show you how that works. Um, and so we're going to go back to our whiteboard. And now... Uh, we are going to use uh, this equation right down here. Okay, we're going to do it for our 8-inch QMD line, so I'm going to plug that in. And so I know now that my basal area on that top row is 120. I divide that by uh, QMD squared. I'm doing the 8 line, so 8 squared is 64. I'm going to go ahead and type 64 in there because I could square 8 in my head times 0 0.005454, and that is it. And so I'm going to go ahead and go over to Excel right now and plug that in to get us a number, equals 120. And you have to make sure you do your order of operations correct here. If I took this number and I divided 120 by 64, we can see that's going to be equal to slightly less than 0.5. And then I multiply 0.5 by this tiny number, that's going to give us a really, really small number, a very unreasonable number, because we did not correctly implement our order of operations. Really what you need to do is multiply the 64 by 0 0.005454 on your calculator. If you're doing this on your calculator, get whatever that number is and divide by 120 by that number, and it will give you the correct figure. When I'm doing it in Excel, I'm just typing in parentheses, just like I use these brackets here, 64 times 0 0.005454, and it tells me I'm looking for 343.78 trees per acre, okay? 
And so it equals 343.78. And again, the decimals, we're not gonna be able to eyeball that on that diagram. But let me flip us back to our diagram. Okay, and so it already made my six inch line disappear. Uh, but here, let me go ahead and annotate this for you. And so remember, we plugged in basal area equals 120 square feet per acre. We plugged in eight inches QMD. We know we're trying to draw the eight inch QMD line and we got 343. So here's 300, 320, 340, and that's 360 over here. So I just need to be slightly to the right of this line and I'm gonna plug that in right there. I connect it to zero, zero, and lo and behold, here is our eight inch QMD line. When you're labeling these on your graphic that you're gonna turn in, make sure you label at least one of them as a, you know, units and that it's a QMD line. And then all the, all the others, you can just put the number on there because you can see this is gonna get pretty complex. So we remember our six inch line is somewhere over here. And again, I'm not drawing these precisely, just giving you an idea of what this diagram is gonna look like. Our four inch line was somewhere around there. And then as we go, we've got 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 28. We've got six more lines that are all gonna fall in here. And I've spaced them out a little bit, but you can see they're gonna start getting pretty close together like this. And we're gonna ultimately end up with a diagram looking something like this once we have our QMD lines on there. Make sure you label your Y axis correctly. Make sure you label your X axis correctly. That'll be easier if you're just hand drawing it or however you're doing it, uh, unlike Zoom, okay? Okay, so that's the QMD lines. We're halfway done with this diagram. The next thing we need to do is we need to draw our um, relative density lines. So let me scroll up here uh, so we can see what that's gonna look like. It's gonna bring these lines with me, but we'll still be able to read under them. And so we're gonna use the SDI equation right here. And for this diagram, what I'm telling you, we're using SDI-based relative densities. So we know at about 58%, we get the onset of density-dependent mortality. These QMD lines we've just drawn, they're the same for any species in any region. They're a mathematical relationship. But now once we start wanting to draw our stocking lines on there, we need to know what species th this diagram is for and we need to know what region it's in because those stocking lines vary by species and region. So we're doing this one for an upland hardwood stand where we know that the maximum SDI is 230, okay? And so what we're, using is if you're over 55% relative density, we know you're getting into a lot of density dependent mortality. So that's our A line. Anything up to that is full stocking, over that is overstocked. Our B line, we're gonna use about a 30% relative density line, okay? Um, and so below 30%, we're saying you're wasting growing space. About 30% to 55%, that's your management zone. <clears throat> and then our C line here, uh, we're using 15%. And this is an estimate. Ideally, the C line will take you 10 years to grow back to the B line on an adequate site. I kind of eyeballed this because this is the point at which crown closure is going to occur in a naturally regenerated stand. So that's how I came up to that, but it is uh, an approximate estimation. Okay, and so here's what we're going to do. Let me get these QMD lines back in the right spot. Now they're back in the right spot. What I'm going to do when we look at our equation for SDI, it includes two things, trees per acre, and it includes QMD in addition to SDI. So if I know that my relative density on the A line is 55% of my maximum SDI, I can calculate that pretty easily. And so here, let me use a text box, and we know we've got a pretty simple equation, right? Relative density equals actual SDI over max SDI. So we've got a pretty simple equation there. And so in this case, I know that I know my max SDI, it's 230, and I know my relative density for my A-line, it's 55%. So what I can do, I can algebraically reshuffle this equation, and it's just RD times max SDI equals the SDI where this condition is true. So I plug in 0 0.55 times 230, and let me hop over here to Excel on my machine, and I can do that, 0 0.55 times 230, 126.5. And so let me get back here. Okay, so I've got, let me get this so I can type back in this box. There we go, 126.5. So I know for my A line, for my A line, SDI equals 126.5. Okay? And so you can see how you would do this exact same calculation for your B line or your C line. 
your B line instead of 0.55, you plug in 0 0.30, and your C line, you plug in 0.15. I'm only going to help us with the A line here so you can see the process for that. It's the same process. The only thing that differs is the relative density. Okay, so we know SDI equals 126. Let me flip us back over uh, to our whiteboard. Okay, so I've got our whiteboard here. I am going to clear our whiteboard. Um, uh, so you can pause it right here and take a screenshot if you want all that. Let me get rid of all of this. Okay, and so now let's figure out how we're gonna draw our A line, our B line, and our C line. SDI equals trees per acre times, and then in here we've got QMD over 10 raised to the 1.605 power, close brackets. That's our equation for SDI. You can see it earlier in the lab handout. Well, let's use the same trick we used earlier to make what looks like a complex algebraic equation very simple. I'm gonna define X as, um, maybe I can copy it and paste it even. I'm gonna define X as this quantity that I put in brackets. There we go, I copied and pasted it, which makes that first equation now SDI equals trees per acre times X. Pretty easy, right? So let me solve this for trees per acre. To do that, pretty straightforward, right? Divide both sides by X. I'm putting trees per acre over here now just to make it look a little nicer. But you can see how I arrived at this. And then I'm just going to plug that other quantity back in for X. Trees per acre equals SDI over. And I'm just going to paste it because I still have it on my clipboard. There we go. So this equation and this equation are the same thing. I've just algebraically reorganized them now, so trees per acre is on its own side, okay? Well, here's how you're gonna draw your A line. It's pretty straightforward, okay? Let me show you two examples. Let me show you the QMD 28 and the QMD 20 points, okay? Um, and so if I'm doing the A line, I know SDI equals 126.5. I just showed you how we calculated that. It was 0.55 times 230. Okay, so that's the SDI that's true anywhere on my A line. Um, and then I know I'm gonna use the QMD 28 inch line first, my largest QMD line. And so all I have to do is plug and chug. So I get this whole equation, let me paste it for you. And I plug in 126.5 there, I plug in 28 here. And let me do that on Excel on my machine here. So I already know 28 over 10 is gonna be 2.8. Okay, so that's easy. So I'm just gonna take equals 2.8, up carrot, I'm gonna raise it to the 1.605 power, and that's 5.22, and in Excel, I'm just gonna multiply that number now, or sorry, that 5.22, I'm gonna take 126.5 and divide it by that 5.22. Okay, and I got 24.23. 24.23. Okay, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my 20 inch QMD line. So I can show you how to draw the A line. 126.5 over, just copy all this out again, save us some time. And I'm gonna plug in 20 here now. So I'm doing the exact same thing I just did, except now I'm plugging in 20 over 10 instead of 28 over 10. And that is gonna give me 2.0. So if I raise two to the 1.605 power, it's 3.04, I divide 126.5 by 3.04, and it gives me 40, 41.58, you could round it to 5.9 again. You're not gonna be that precise on this diagram. Now I'm going super old school. I'm gonna write this down on a post-it note so I don't forget, 24.23, cause I'm switching screens here, 41.58. And I'm gonna have to redraw back in the QMD lines here as I switch the share over. Uh, back to, here we go. Okay, so you've already drawn your QMD lines on here, so let me plug those back in for us. And again, remember, I'm not putting these in the right spot, I'm just showing you how this works. And so it's gonna look a little different than your diagram. Here's our 28 inch QMD line, here's our 20 inch QMD line, and let me just throw in a few other arbitrary QMD lines in arbitrary places, just so you can see what this diagram is gonna look like in the end. Okay, so our, we've got QMD lines in there, just as an example. So remember that when I plugged in our 28-inch line, um, what I got 
uh, was 24.23 trees per acre. So right here's my 20 line, there's my 40 line on my x-axis. So I go about a quarter of the way between my 20 and 40, and I'm right here. So I go up to the 28 inch line, and I make a mark there. So I'm gonna circle it. Then I got 41.58. So I'm just slightly over the 40 inch line, and that's for my 20 inch QMD line. And so I follow this up, I make a mark right here, and this really isn't working out correctly because these QMD lines are in the wrong places. Uh, but you can see what you can do is make a dot on each QMD line. But what's going to happen by the time is all said and done, when you put all your dots on there for your A line, you do this for every QMD line, you're going to end up with like an Amazon little swooshy arrow symbol like this. It's going to look like that, and you can just go ahead and label that as your A line. 55% RD. Okay. So that's what your A line will look at the look like at the end. You're going to go do the same thing again for your B line and C line, and all you're changing is the relative density you plug in to get the SDI where that is true, and you will be able to draw your your B line is going to be below your A line but similarly shaped, and your C line is going to be below even at but similarly shaped. Now sometimes what I'll see in this lab, you know, people will be drawing lines and then it goes like boop boop, you know, has like a hummock in it like that. This hummock right here means you've either drawn this QMD line right here in the incorrect place or you've incorrectly calculated the trees per acre or you've looked it up wrong right there. That one point tends to be a problem. So if you're doing this by hand, these lines won't be nice and perfectly curved. They'll be a little bit bumpy. That's to be expected. That's going to be normal uh, based on um, how, how accurate you are in drawing it. So I, I don't need perfect diagrams. Just do your best. Okay. So that's how you create a Gingrich style. And I'm calling it Gingrich style because remember Gingrich used crown competition factor to do his stocking lines. And so his A line would have been 100% on that crown competition factor, whereas we used SDI. So it's kind of a hybrid style of a stand density management diagram and a stocking guide, okay? Okay, if you look at the lab, uh, let me scroll up here for us. There are several other things that you need to do once you've created this diagram. And, Thanks to Zoom, this diagram is coming with us. <laughs> um, so you're gonna answer questions one through four and you can see four has parts A through F. So questions number one, two, and three, you could calculate them or you can look them up on your diagram, but they're just asking you, they're giving you two of QMD, basal area, and trees per acre, not all three, they're giving you just two, they're asking you what the third is. So if you can look it up on your diagram and come up with a ballpark estimate, that'll earn you full credit. If you wanna plug it into the equations we worked out earlier, that'll give you the very precise number to however many decimal places you want. You're welcome to do it that way. But then once you have that point, look it up on your diagram and it may ask you, you know, for a point way up here, what's happening in the stand? Well, our stand's overstocked. So what do we think is happening? For a stand maybe over here, or over here, what are our management recommendations? So numbers one through three are showing you how you can apply this diagram to answer very simple questions very quickly and easily. And then what's going to happen uh, on number four, it's working you out through a scenario where you're going to draw a thinning scenario on here. So you're going to have a stand that establishes so many trees per acre, it's going to grow up to a point. You're going to thin it, you're going to let it grow, you're going to thin it again. And then after that, it asks you what you want to do towards the end, you can let it grow. And again, this line is very inaccurate. I just drew that and made it up, but it's something like what the line you're probably gonna be drawing on your diagram is for question number four. And then you would label each point on there. You know, And again, I may not be putting these in the right places, but I'm just showing you an example of how you can label the various points A through F that that question is requesting. So you could label them like that. Now this scenario it's gonna be asking you about, it's gonna be asking you to apply a geometric thin followed by a low thin. Let me scroll up to the scenario so we can look at it together. And so it is asking you, okay. So you're doing a geometric thin, a corridor thin, removing 20 foot wide corridors every 60 feet on center. You grow it out until it hits these stipulations and then you do a grade C low thin. So let me go over a few things that'll make that easier for you. Okay, so there's always questions on what the heck does the corridor thin mean when you're cutting down a 20 foot wide corridor spaced out every 60 feet on center. So let me flip back to the whiteboard and show you that. Okay, and so here is our stand right over here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut down a corridor 
We'll make it brown, color of wood. So I'm gonna cut down a corridor here like this, that's 20 feet wide. And then I'll cut down another corridor over here like this, that's 20 feet wide. And I'll cut down another corridor over here that's 20 feet wide. So this is what that scenario is describing there. And when I look at my corridors, they're 20 feet on center. Uh, or sorry, they're 20 foot wide corridor space, 60 feet on center. So this brown arrow is now 60 feet long. Okay, 60 feet. And we can see that's from the center point to the center point of the next corridor, which means because these corridors are 20 foot wide, uh, we know that half the width of the corridor is 10 feet wide. So that means you have 10 foot of a corridor here, 10 foot of a corridor right here, and that 10 feet plus that 10 feet plus whatever this uncut area totals to 60 feet. And so from that, you can determine what proportion of the stand is removed in both trees breaker and basal area, and that will guide your corridor thin. Okay, for your low thin now, when we go and we look at the low thin, and you can't see this because I'm still on my whiteboard, but I'm looking at the same section here on this lab. Um, you prescribe and oversee a typical grade C low thin that reduces the basal area to 40 square feet per acre. You know what your basal area will be on that low thin. So then you either need to know your QMD or your trees per acre to draw it. But it's a low thin. You may be removing a lot of trees per acre, few. It depends on the nature of the stand. Okay. So what I want you to do is think about how does QMD, and I'll type it out here, how does a grade C low thin impact the QMD of a stand? Okay, we covered this um, Thursday, a couple weeks ago in class, the Thursday when we were supposed to do this lab in the afternoon. Go back and review that video or, or go back and look through those slides where we talked about D over D ratios and the impact of different types of thinning on your pre-thin versus your post-thin QMD. And there is some very detailed and specific guidance in there. And I highlighted it at the time we went over it. Uh, that you need to predict how a low thin will impact the QMD of your stand. Okay, uh, so that is how you create your Gingrich style stocking guide. That's how you do these exercises on it. Uh, I'm certainly available for any questions that you've got. Feel free to email me, uh, but that's the, the Gingrich stocking guide. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. Uh, so this will be available to you as one video and I'm gonna go make a second video uh, that will handle the stand density management diagram so you can do them as two completely different exercises.